All right, guys, Trinity John here from Simpler Trading. Hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend. What a great week last week. I mean, it seemed a little vicious depending on what side you were on, but I felt like we did very, very well. So congratulations to yet another great week. Today, we'll be talking about the broad market analysis. I'll be covering the 15th into the 20th. We don't have any holidays this week. Um, we do have... Uh, futures opening up tonight and it is central time here where i live in florida so five o'clock is when the futures open so we'll have charts on the es futures and the nasdaq towards the end of this video um and we'll talk about those so if you're a futures trader that's what you'll be looking at but overall i want you to make sure that you take in everything that i talk about here because it really helps you to understand how i analyze from a week-to-week -week basis now before we move forward if you would just take a few minutes and go ahead and hit the like button and then after you watch the video if you have any kind of feedback if you've been doing really well using the broad market analysis or something maybe that you would like to see in this uh, go ahead and comment I really appreciate you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we'll be looking at this morning, we're going to be covering our U.S. economic um, data and or anything that's popping up. So this week's major U.S. economic reports and Fed speakers. Now, this is free information. I just simply go to Market Watch, and you guys can see my link right here. Um, this link could be copy and pasted, and you can use this information yourself. Again, we'll be covering again tonight into Friday, so let's get started. Monday, September 16th, Empire State Manufacturing Survey. These are in Eastern time, so please note that. Tuesday, we have U.S. Retail Sales, Industrial Production, Capacity Utilization, Business Inventories, and Home Builder Confidence Index. Now, I'll tell you right off the bat, none of these do I really use uh, for my trading. They are just catalysts that push price into supply and demand. We are identifying the levels before price gets there, and that's what's important for you to understand. Once price gets there, then we use the techniques that we uh, educate on and train at Simpler Trading. So if you're interested in understanding how to trade with supply and demand, please check us out. On Wednesday, housing starts, building permits, but really, this is where it all happens. I believe the market is going to center and or get the playing field ready for the FOMC interest rate decision. And then after that, you have the presser with Fed Chair Powell coming in at 2.30 2 Eastern time on Wednesday. Thursday then kicks it off with initial jobless claims. Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Survey, existing home sales, and then U.S. leading economic indicators. And then Friday, we have nothing. So really, Monday and Tuesday feel pretty bleak. You know, it's one of those things where I feel like we could get some kind of uh, outside information to kind of get the market going. You know, somebody tweets something or says something that can uh, create some volatility, which we'll be talking about a little bit later as well in the market, but just understand that the overall trend is up. It's been working for us very well. And we'll get into those higher time frame charts here in a second. Let's move on now uh, into our next information that we like to look at. And that's gonna be over here on X. I like to use right here, Earning Whispers. Uh, this is great, it's free content. Uh, they published this out, it's the calendar. I've always relied on this, it's very, very good. And far as this week is concerned, you can see things are dying out, right? It's getting towards the end of the quarter. Um, when I look at Monday, there's nothing on here that I'm interested in for myself. Tuesday, absolutely nothing. Wednesday, nothing that I'm interested in. Thursday, uh, FedEx, Lennar, um, and other than that, those are probably the only two names that I would be interested in uh, potentially trading into earnings, and that would be FedEx. And then Friday, same thing. So pretty quiet on this front, and you could see really the leading indicator is going to be Wednesday with uh, Fed Jerome Powell, okay? Next thing that we're going to be looking at is TradingView. Now, I use Thinkorswim and TradingView. Um, hundreds of people who have our indicators here at Simpler Trading also have access to TradingView. Um, so you get the indicators on both. I love TradingView for the fact that it's clean, it's easy to save templates, um, and on my 
on my phone, it's even more awesome because I can, uh, there's a couple features there that are not um, available on Thinkorswim. So I love being able to go back and forth, but just to be clear, I only trade on Thinkorswim's platform, okay? So let's get over here. This week going into only 15 days left in a quarter, I want to not only talk about the quarter chart, but also the weekly. So this is going to be a little bit longer and hopefully you'll learn something from this. So we're going to jump in here into the quarterly. All right. And you guys know, I like to remind you every single week we put notes in there. But also what is really, really important is for the catalyst that we can't see coming. Now, the market creates in balance. Right. And that is the idea is that we are identifying supply and demand by using these structures in the market. It's like looking at the beach, if you will. And when you have a heavy footprint, it's really easy to see in the sand. But sometimes there's these tiny footprints and that's us retail traders. They're hard to see. So I'm interested in identifying those bigger footprints in the sand, which is our canvas, if you will, this entire chart. And when I identify those levels, okay, I want to line myself up with them. What's really, really important about the quarter chart in 2024 and into 2025 is understanding that we do have a level down here that we have not come back to. And we are a little stretched. And it's not about saying, hey, guys, I think we're going to pull back. It's more of a just a a reminder that the markets like to pull back to imbalance. So if we ever come back into this area, I want to remind everybody, this is where I want to get long, but understand it won't be easy for everybody because there will be a lot of fear and a lot of negative talk in the market. Okay. Just want to put that out there. Now, if we look at the quarterly chart, each one of these candles represent a quarter. There's a lot of things we could take just by using not only the trendy indicators, but just understanding some very simple uh, technical analysis. You know, every time I've had a buy signal, it's worked out on the quarterly time frame. The other thing you'll note is that when price is above this EMA cloud, it's a great place to be long. And any time that we pull back into the cloud, it's a great place to basically load back up. And you can see we have dug in pretty deep, like back in COVID. All right. We dug in, but we never broke through and closed below that cloud. And you can see we did the same thing up here in 2022. We pulled back into this level, but we rounded out. We got a buy signal. And I remember covering this buy signal. Uh, but I also remember being in Orlando and being very bullish on the pullback into this demand zone that we found on a lower time frame. And I like to remind everybody that while I was in Orlando, the masses, and I, when I say the masses, it felt like 99% of the people I was listening to uh, were very bearish during this time frame, as if prices would continue down. This is the advantage of understanding how to find these levels and starting to get bullish and then starting to basically load up on positions. Things like Tesla, which did really, really well for us, just like IWM, which are options reached up to 700% and they still have 100 plus days until expiration. Now, we've taken most of that position off on IWM, but we started loading back up and now those are profitable again. So again, I just want to emphasize that the quarterly chart is where it's at. Now, most of you want to come into the market and make money right away. And we have strategies for that. And we trade that intraday strategy all, I mean, almost every single day. And we do really, really well. But I just want to make sure that you understand that swing trading is still alive. We have a lot of swing trades that we have in the portfolio that are working out. And really, it doesn't have to be difficult. It's just more about the patience, the mindset, the psychology of trading. And if you want to learn more about that, come and check us out. I'm going to teach you ways that will make you feel more confident and consistent in your long-term trading. Far as going into this quarter, again, what I love, and I know it's just a it's simplistic, but I love that they let you know when this candle is going to close on TradingView. I have 15 days and four hours until this candle closes. As of right now, you can see that this is a continuation candle to the upside. There's four of them. Matter of fact, for an entire year, this has been going up. 
And it's kind of funny. I think about the time that I was in Las Vegas this past year at the Money Show, and I talked about how every quarter you would look back and see that we ended on a positive note. And it's really coming true now. And again, I can't believe that we're in September and that the year is coming to an end soon. And I'll be curious to see if this plays out. Um, that means that doesn't mean that we can't have sharp pullbacks within that time. But I feel like every pullback into demand is a buying opportunity um, for me. OK, and again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just teaching technical analysis and a more consistent uh, and confident way of trading levels. OK, far as this week is concerned with uh, the notes, I said a bullish look as we approach the end of this quarter candle. 15 days until the candle closes. Price is back above the 88.7 of the high. This, this gives us a high probability we break to all-time high soon. Interesting, as we approach the Fed rate decision on Wednesday of this week, and our over-under this week is 559. Once again, that 559 is at 88.7 level. Now, remember, it was just a couple of weeks ago that we were here, and basically it was the same note, and we had a really deep pullback. So again, price is king, and I don't want to forward look or give you too much speculation, because what that does is just it creates something in the back of your head and gives you a bias. We are very open to the idea that anything can happen, but we want to concentrate that we take our trades and take our chances, take our shots at levels and not speculate. So we do have levels and you guys all know that. Okay. Far as this week is also concerned, uh, depending on the reaction, I believe that we could see highs towards 568 to 580 and lows as low as 550 by 528, depending on the reaction of the market. Let's go ahead and go into the cues. Everything that I just taught you on that chart is fractal. You can use that on any chart. You could see the same thing. My buy signals that are a part of my indicator in the Trinity Cloud have worked very, very well over the long period of time. You can see that a simple cloud also can really help you stay on the right side of the trend. A couple things to note here as well, just like the um, SPY, we have an inside and up formation here. We have demand that's sitting down here. And prices did, it looks like pretty close, came back here about three quarters ago. The difference between the SPY and the Qs, the Qs have really been stagnant. Uh, they've been fun to trade from a week to week basis, but over a long period of time this quarter, we basically have an indecision candle. Not much has happened. We hit the target that I gave you last um, in this quarter. We hit it at 502, but ever since we hit there, we have not done anything to um, show that we can take this out. Now, I will tell you from last uh, week, you know, we are progressing here. This is starting to look like the candle itself can go above the body of last quarter. And once we do that, we find ourselves in the same position as the SPY as a continuation candle to the upside. Okay. And this is a great bullish look here. All right. It's easy to say the same thing, that price is extended from the cloud and that we have not come back to the imbalances in the market. So once again, just be aware of those levels. Let's go ahead and read the notes. Price simply came into a weekly demand zone and this past week bounced from that zone to a weekly supply zone, ending the week at supply. This leads me to be cautious. Remember, we are getting bullish and long in demand zones and we are cautious and depending on the price action at the supply zone getting short, okay? Targets, if price can sustain over 480, will be 486 to 493, and your support is 468 to 464. Now, before we move on, I wanna remind you to please hit the like button on this video. This video is something that I do on Sundays out of my own time, and if you appreciate it, it lets me know by you just giving me a simple like. So if I have 700 people who are watching the video, but I'm only seeing about 100 and something, it makes me wonder if I should continue doing it. Now, I love doing it and I could do it for myself, but in order for me to continue sharing it, I would like to see a little bit more participation on the like side. So once again, thank you guys so much. 
Now, let's go back really fast because I told you I'd be showing you a couple more things. I talked about the weekly on the SPY and the Qs. So let's take the time frame and we're going to bring this down to weekly so that you can understand what we came into and why we got such a nice bounce, if you would. So notice here uh, on the weekly chart on the SPY, we simply came down into the cloud and then we found buyers and then we pushed back up. Now, when I tell you that we're 88.7% of the way above the high, all I'm doing is taking fibs from here and anchoring my fibs or my coefficients and price right now is above 88.7% of that. Now, my studies have shown once we can create value above the 88.7, we have a 95% chance of an all-time high. Now, listen, when you think about all-time highs, you know, I think a lot of traders are like, wow, wow, you know, but what does that mean? That means that we could literally just go one penny over the high and come back down and my overall probability has hit, okay? Now, we do want to use extension targets. And if you look over to the right, you guys can see that I have targets to the upside. So again, 568, 581, and so forth. As far as the support is concerned, okay, the support is down here, and that's based off some different levels, placing my coefficients. But also on the weekly, I love the fact that we're above the cloud. Now, when I take you over to the four hour, you'll also notice that we are above the cloud. And that's a very good thing. Matter of fact, this is where trends start. When trends start above the cloud on a four hour, I love to ride that trend. When we are, are below a four hour cloud, then that's where I really start to think, uh-oh, until price can get above that cloud, I really wanna be cautious and looking for dip buying, or if you're into shorting, you could be shorting as well. Let's go over to the Qs, and I wanna take a look at the same thing. QQQ, once again, above the cloud. We also have, you'll notice that my candles have changed colors. They have went from red to white to green. Basically, momentum is changing. But on the weekly, you can also come back here and see this beautiful move back um, that really, I thought, you know, probably shook out a lot of weak hands. But finding an identifying structure, I promise you, is key to all of this. And you understand that all the things that you're looking at on social media and stuff are just noise. For instance, we have these levels in the room. We teach them to hundreds of people who, who watch us every single morning. And you could see right here that this level worked. We had identified that back in the day. We took action there. And then this candle right here that I believe shook a lot of weak hands out, it's a very straightforward inside and up formation, the one that we teach right here in the room. And this is the reaction. This is the reaction. Price came right into demand at 450 and ended the week here at 475, $25 to the upside. Now, this is my big thing. We came into demand, probably shook out some traders. You'll hear, you know, amongst them, the masses of traders that it's really choppy. It's really not choppy. This is a trend to the downside into inside and up formations. This is really nice for several weeks to the upside. Then we come back into that demand zone and boom, this is what we get. Now, the reason why I'm cautious going into this week, specifically in the NASDAQ, the QQQ, is because we stalled literally right here at an inside and down formation. And I'll show you later in the futures that this was the 618. And this is a very important level. When I say 618, anchoring the Fibonacci's from here to here and the move up, is now stalled right under the 618. So we're not above the golden Fibonacci level. Very, very important going into this week. And I find it very interesting. And I've been doing this for years. And it, it, I say it's interesting, but it's also routine that we have pushed price right at a neutral level where most traders are now going to be in a position of speculation. And if there's one thing that I understand is speculation can kill. It really can. It can kill the portfolio because you find yourself going, oh, well, I think it's going to do this or I think it's going to do that. But why not just concentrate on your levels and use your process and trade those levels? If price is not at levels, don't do anything. Let's go ahead and move on. The next thing that I'm going to be showing you all is moving into the 
DXY or the dollar. So let's go ahead and click DXY. Now I watched this, it's really straightforward. I don't need to do an entire tutorial about this, but when the dollar is breaking down, usually the market is moving to the upside and vice versa. Now we noticed that we came into demand. Uh, we understand when prices come into demand, we look for the dollar to move up. And then when they hit supply, then we look for the dollar to go down. So in using this analysis, when I'm teaching you, you pull all these things together and it starts to make sense. Like for example, right? The Qs have come up into supply. Um, the SPY is 88.7 of the high. And yet the dollar is just accumulating, it looks like, in the demand zone. And it is a time to be cautious because what if this takes off? If it takes off, then we understand the market can pull back and will cause some volatility, which I'll show you on the VIX why there's another level of caution coming into this week. Now, please understand before I move on that caution for us just means that we understand the big picture, but we're still trading day to day, week to week. My portfolio has leap trades in it. It has equity in it. I trade futures. I do it all. And I love trading options as well. And then you have Melissa, who is also doing the same thing, but also, you know, she has a large amount of her trades also from an intraday perspective or one to several days. Okay. So this week, again, the dollar's in demand and it could bounce. All right. And just understand that. If the dollar stays in this green box, we will most likely get a nice move to the upside. However, resistance is at uh, here is going to be around this 38.2 and this 23.6. So 101 point, um, uh, just say 102 by 102 and three quarters. This area is resistance. And even if it bounces, I'm not really concerned unless it gets above the 618. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the TNX or the 10 year treasury. This is important, but I also feel like we've kind of come to what I was predicting. And if you go back to my BMAs from earlier in the year, not a lot of traders probably had the confidence that I did, but I could see that the treasury was going to move from here to here. And uh, of course, if you're paying attention to social media and news and stuff like that and not price action, or supply and demand, then you could find yourself being in the camp that you thought that these would continue up, that the market would crash, and that, you know, basically the world was coming to an end. But here we are, right into the zone I was looking for, and as predicted, lower lows are happening, and I could see a move all the way back into 2.9. Now, I keep saying that, but again, I'm also going to use my coefficients and some uh, fib work to say, hey, listen, go, you know, we could see some sort of a bounce in here, but again, I'm not worried unless we get above this cloud. And that cloud happens to be confluent with the 50, which is around 4.149. Now I will say, if you wanna take immediate caution, that's if we get above the 23.6 and right into the beginning of this cloud, around 3.8, okay? So those are my levels for the TNX or the 10 year treasury. The next thing that I want to show you is the SKU. If you want to learn more about the SKU, I believe I do have a video on my YouTube page. And obviously, you can just go to my search window in YouTube and just put SKU and see if that comes up. And it'll give you more information on that. Now, what I'm looking for here is really straightforward. I've come up with these levels over the last year and a half. They worked really, really well. And then we have our original levels that we've been using for many years. Um, but I want to talk about the ones that are really important right now. And those are the ones that come into this little box. Basically, if the SKU comes back into this red line, we're buying calls five to 10 days out. Once uh, the SKU pushes up into this level, if you, if you know how to draw like a trend line, basically just come in here, use your crosshairs and, you know, somewhere in here and this blue level, this is where I want you to be cautious. So again, when I'm cautious, doesn't mean I won't go long but we're just taking profits a little bit sooner and we're pulling those stops up because we understand in the background that things are getting very elevated and we look for the market to go down, okay? When the skew is low, okay, right here, the markets are really fearful, right? That means the market's moving down in the background, all right? When the skew is high, basically people are super greedy, all right? And that's when a lot of people are gonna be on the call side. Your put call ratio is going to reflect that. 
all right? So these levels have worked for over a year now, and we'll continue to use these levels in 2024. And again, to remind everybody, I get super bearish if we close two weeks underneath this red level here, and it still has not happened. It's amazing that um, it continues to work over and over and over. If you go back and look at the, you know, the past, that was not the case. This is why we use the extreme levels here, and we used extreme levels here to get long and or short the market. So this week, uh, the skew was at 149. I am saying caution, but market still has a lot of room to move to the upside and create more greed in the market. So that leaves me to looking at the fear and greed. The fear and greed this uh, week or ended this past week at 49. You can't get any more neutral really than this. Um, this is perfect scenario coming into this week's um, catalyst, which for me is going to be the rate decision and Jerome. And then on Thursday, um, some of the uh, econ data as well. So this puts everybody at a speculation point. A lot of people don't have patience. I mean, think about it. A lot of traders don't have patience. So when that happens, they know this. And when we put you at neutral, um, we can basically take advantage of that by using CHOP. My overall ideas when I'm trading in CHOP and we're this close to supply is I will typically come in and coach, hey guys, it's sideways to down until proven otherwise. And I'll give you some scenarios here in a few minutes. Overall though, we are neutral just so that everybody understands. This leads me into our uh, final kind of segment into this BMA. We're gonna cover futures and then we're going to cover Bitcoin and then we're going to cover the VIX. So let's go ahead and get into that really quick. And again, another reminder, please hit the like button. Bitcoin, uh, we'll get to here in a second. Loving what I'm seeing over there, but let's start at ES Futures. This is the weekly, um, and this is going to look a lot like the SPY. I love the futures because I've always taught that it, it shows us the future. So as long as, what I mean, as long as we could stay above the support, I'm looking for a move into supply and then possibly a breakout into 58.17 by 59.27. All right, a couple things to take from this weekly chart. We are above the cloud, okay? Uh, we've moved, like I said, above 88.7% of the high. And because of that, I'm looking for a breakout into all-time high as long as the support holds. Now, what makes this difficult is that you get pullbacks like this, right? And then all of a sudden, as traders, a lot of traders have short-term memories, and they'll forget everything that I've taught on this, right? And then they get bearish all of a sudden down here at the end. But look, your inside and up formation was right there. We came into that level, got that really nice spike, and again, here we are. So what I've been doing this year and what's been working for me is that when prices come up to these levels, I'm trimming. So like last week, I'm trimming, I'm taking profits, but I still have a nice uh, value of net liquidity to the upside, but I'm also building a hedge for 2025 to the downside. Now that hedge is only going to make up typically 20% of my net liquidity long. So what's actually allocated in the market. Again, this is for me, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is how I do things. So if I had $10,000 on the long side, I would take two grand and put that into or build up a short position, okay? And that could look be looked at as a hedge. I just look at it as a trade, but we call it a hedge a lot, a lot of times, okay? So again, this is what I have right here on the weekly. My biggest thing, just pay attention to these levels uh, here in the trendy room. Uh, you, you guys, I can't make this shit up. You know, we came right into the trendy edge. We know and we're trained to buy the, the dip in here based on certain parameters. Uh, they worked and then we find ourselves up here, okay? Moving on, we're going to get into the daily. The daily triggers are something that worked to the T last week. Um, you don't see those levels on here, but if you go back to the old BMA and look at your trigger longs, holy crap, uh, they worked very, very well. Matter of fact, your trigger long last week was right here at the trendy edge. I can't make this up. This is where it said trigger long. This was the result. Huge, huge win there if you took advantage of that, whether it was SPY, SPX. And, and speaking of, we had SPX. So we had $5,600 5, that we bought, I believe on Monday or last Friday, I can't remember. And those went all the way from $2, I believe it was, all the way to 40 something. 
All right, so just to show you the power of options, it is possible. All right, now this week, um, since we're talking about it really quick, SPX could lead us to the downside again. And we do have levels that we talked about on Friday that you could be looking at hedging for pretty inexpensive during you know this Fed rate decision, just in case we do get a pullback. Now, these are new triggers. This is where you would pause the video, go ahead and take that and put these levels on your chart. And if you wanna learn how to trade around these levels, we do not trade them blindly. Just come and check us out at Simpler Trading. Let's go ahead and move into the four hour. Um, all I did here was show you the value that our two hour zone worked. This was something I created and gave you. Um, it worked very, very well. Um, we got above the four hour cloud. Things are looking really good. We moved to the trendy edge. This was the reason for the 5600 put, or sorry, call on SPX that worked really well because we came into demand and I was looking for my trendy edge. Okay, now the big thing going into the four hour, all I've done this week is give you two zones. You'll notice that they come right around the formations and the buy signals. Um, we did hit the trendy edge. We did get the resistance that we we're looking for. And if we pull back, look for the cloud to hold. That's going to be a nice little key on a smaller time frame to let you know if the trend's going to stay intact on that four hour. These are the levels going forward on the four hour. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, NASDAQ. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to work over here into a weekly, go over a couple things. Notice we came into the inside and up formation. Uh, that worked very, very well. Um, it's hard to see, but this is a wick. Even it keeps confusing me. It just looks like a little candle right there, but there's a wick right here. Um, we came into the inside and up formation two weeks ago, and then last week we got the big pop. But my big caution level is this right here, the 618. We simply bounce right back up to it. And the golden fib is a big, big level for us um, that we use here in the trendy room, and lots of technical traders use it. Um, but it's a big level going forward. We have a demand zone that's working. We have a supply zone up here. Overall, because we came into demand, I do believe we're headed to supply. Timing is the variable. Um, but when talking this week into this event, this is a big level for me, guys. Um, I'd like to see it actually over the purple level, not just the yellow. Um, and that purple level is 19,710. And then above that, we can see 20,131. On a pullback, um, let's go into the smaller time frames. I do believe that buyers could show up at around 19,222. I don't want to be wrong too long here. So again, if we pull back deeper, then that's where I would like to see if we get the pullback, a much deeper pullback, more fear into the market and potentially buy down here at 18,501. But it is very possible that the cloud is confluent with my trigger long, which I'm using some structure and um, some Fibonacci's, that if it if this trigger long holds, that we continue to move uh, to the upside, okay? So we got some resistance and we got some short triggers as well in here. Let's go ahead and move on to the four hours. Same thing. This one, I did not change the chart at all from last week. You guys can see our demand level worked, uh, which is right here. We came back into that demand level again. We pushed to the upside. We came into the trendy edge. We pulled back. Um, and we also pulled into the two hour plus five hour zone again. And this zone's been kind of a pain in the neck on a lower time frame, and it continues to be. All right. So we're basically between two opposing zones. I'm going to leave those on. The only thing I would tell you is we don't have to come all the way back to this zone if we get a pullback. We have a lot of interest right here in this candle. So you could just take a line and kind of draw it right there. And that would be your support uh, of a move on the pullback. Okay. So what does this lead us into next? That's right, Bitcoin. So I do have a uh, crypto and uh, Bitcoin and stuff like that. And I love this because it really goes to show you just how amazing supply and demand is. Uh, we can go back several, several weeks. Matter of fact, um, I gave this long here. Uh, I gave this short here in advance. So we already had the zones. And what I've been telling you week after week is that Bitcoin is bullish as long as the green zone holds. Now, I understand that it's wide. It's 47 by 55, but we're looking at a big picture. I'm not sitting here day trading Bitcoin every single day. All right, so I have a long-term position and I'm looking for prices to continue to move up as long as the green zone holds. Now, it doesn't mean I get out either. If the green zone doesn't hold, I'll go to a higher time frame and look for more demand. Overall though, this is an ACDC setup and you know what that means if you're here in the trendy room. I'm looking for a move back into 64,000. 
once and if we get above 67458 i'll make a new video and we'll get pumped uh, but for right now i do believe we're just trading between two opposing zones and things don't look good or, or i shouldn't say you look good they don't look amazing until we can get above this level and they don't look scary unless we get below that level okay so just trading within a range if you will the next thing that i want to show you is going to be the vix okay and on a smaller time frame so you'll notice we got some yellow and blue arrows and on your dashboard here in the trendy room you guys notice that i made you some videos on how to explain how to how how to identify these what they mean and so forth they are different uh, then trendy buy and sell signals. These are what we call trade, trendy turn signals, and we're looking for, uh, you know, moves up and moves down. You can see they work really well. But what one thing I want to identify as we're coming into this event this week um, that you know for the past they don't always work, obviously, but they have been working very well, um, and they do work very well. And this guy shot off, um, you know, last week. Um, and it's saying, hey, we could possibly see some volatility come here. And once again, things are lining up for the event coming into this week. So please take note. Overall, folks, we've been doing really well. I absolutely love the community. And I just want to tell you again, thank you so much for your support and for being here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And I know Melissa feels the same exact way. And I know that Simpler Trading feels the same way. Um, if you've never taken advantage of our community, it's only seven bucks to come in and check us out. And in this segment right towards the end, it'd be a little bit different. I want to take you through our room. Now, a lot of questions that we get um, is, you know, there's several different things. What does the platform look like and those type of things? So I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to show this to you really quickly. Everything that we just went over every Sunday, I fill out and I put the charts in here. Okay, and then at the top of this, I'm going to go ahead and put the links to these videos and also traders can come in here and check out the YouTube videos as well if they like to. And then later on, I'm going to do the neutral strat and I'm going to post that video here. And then I will also do analysis on different stocks and place those videos there. One thing that separates us from thousands of different rooms out there is that Melissa and I use what's called an API to run our alerts. So actual alerts from a real account, not a trader, not a, a paper account. We're not using prop firms or anything like that. This is our money that we're spending on our strategy to teach you. And what's really, really cool is that the API alerts as soon as I take a trade from Thinkorswim, it's sent here to our members within milliseconds. So that is a huge advantage. I promise you, especially with SPX trading, um, not necessarily like spreads, but like if I just go long or short, I don't want my members to see that information several minutes later or several seconds because I know that time is valuable when we're looking at intraday type of trades. So again, milliseconds are very important. The other thing that I love about our alerts is that it shows you a gain and loss. Okay, like for example, uh, this particular trade here, um, you know, I bought and I sold at $1.80. Um, I sold at $1.80, I made 44%, and each option was up $55 from the time that I bought it. Okay, now coming on down here, same thing, you could see here's one of Melissa's trades. Um, I love that it tells you whether we're trimming or opening or closing. So this allows you to know, you know, how many more do we have more contracts and so forth. So again, great. And also the time all the way into the seconds, just to really emphasize that transparency. And over the years, that's exactly what Trendy is proud of, is being able to teach you a process that is repeatable every single day and that we show the transparency and show you that sometimes we win and sometimes we lose as well, but we also win a lot. Okay. Now, again, we do all sorts of different trades, long-term, short-term spreads, butterflies, uh, stock, and so forth. Okay. In our platform, what you're going to notice is that it really is simplistic. And I love that because it um, correlates with the name Simpler Trading. All right. Alerts are right here in this window. And then our main chat is here. And then we have an off topic. Okay. And then over here, this is where my screen shows up when I am uh, giving you 
that screen. What's really cool is we do multiple screens. So you have Melissa's screen in here, my screen, and then I have my future screen. So you have multiple screens that you can select from, which is really neat. The next thing is once you come in here, uh, we have the morning trend that you pay attention to every morning. That's just like a quick note update, kind of how, you know, things that we expect uh, throughout the day like this, you know, hey, it's happy happy Friday. These are my charts for uh, the NASDAQ and the ES futures, and then maybe some econ data just to make it easy. And then of course, the broad market analysis that I just went over. Then we got educational videos. And then every year before the year starts, I do an outlook. And these have been absolutely on fire. And then moving on, if you're new, you come over here. And then I update uh, our traders here with our futures charts. And then we have Melissa swing watches and trades. Uh, our API alerts, information on them, if you need to understand a little bit more about them. And then um, open positions for myself, and then my indicators explained, which also, just so you know, if you're already in here, I have new videos. You just go to your dashboard and then go to the Learning Center, and you'll see those videos, and they're very quick videos, and from what I understand, they're really, really good. All right, so again, guys, uh, this is what you can expect when you come in here. Um, a lot of traders also ask, well, how big's the room? Because they feel like, well, if it's too big, maybe you don't get the um, attention that you're looking for. Um, we have, you know, several hundred people in here. It's a very popular room. People love us. Uh, we love them. And they know that because Melissa and I spend hours every single day trading live answering questions and the cool thing is not only is it melissa and i but we have an amazing support team here at simpler who helps us as well so uh just know that you're not going to be ignored just you know reach out to us and talk to us we're we're very happy for you to be here so again if you want to check out uh simplertrading.com do that uh spend the seven bucks if you don't want to be with us that's okay but the majority of people do end up staying because again we pride ourselves on an amazing community. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the Broad Market Analysis. Have an amazing time and we'll see you soon.